Welcome to another episode of Extra Help from Mr. A, and we are going to do the four-step problem-solving model today. So, <clears throat> the four-step problem-solving model is a great way of solving a problem. It allows you to articulate your thinking and allows you to explain your answer really comprehensively so that people are able to understand what you're thinking as you carry out a problem. So let's take a look at our problem. Okay, this question is taken from the EQAO uh, released assessment questions um, and the question is asking consider the fraction shown below 3 quarters, 18 20 fifths, 15 20 fifths, and 75 one hundredths. Which fractions represent equal values? My coworkers are here, so I'm going to pause the video for just a second while I tell them to scram. And don't come back! All right, thanks. Um, now, so as I was saying, we've got a uh, EQAO release question here. We've got it from the EQAO website. You can go there and look at past assessments. Um, one thing that you should take a look at is this box. All your work and all your um, answer should be in that box. Uh, I'm under the impression that things outside the box don't get marked unless you're you know, finishing like one sentence. Um, it can be tight and you might need to practice writing a little bit smaller so that you can get everything in. In fact, even I had to squeeze in my last word when I was uh, solving this problem. So let's take a look at the problem as I've solved it using a four-step problem solving model. Before we go into what how to solve a problem, we should talk about the actual model. So the four-step model is made up of four components, obviously. Um, the first is understand the problem. Um, this means you should be stating the problem in your own words. You should be indicating what information you have, what information you need, and just making sure you understand exactly what the question is asking you. A lot of times students will get to, you know, the second sentence out of three sentences and think they know what the question is and they'll miss the third part which is you know the actual question so it's really crucial that you understand the problem so that you know what you're answering when you're answering it secondly you're going to devise a plan you're going to explain what you're going to do to find out that information that you need so you should make that as clear as possible so that if you make a calculation mistake so you add two and two and get five um, at least the people who will be looking at this will understand that you know what you're trying to do. You just made a little mistake. You might have pressed the wrong number on your calculator or something like that. Um, step three is carry out the plan. That means um, you are going to do your calculations. You're going to show your work and make sure that people can understand where you're getting these numbers that you're talking about. And finally four, and that's a really important one, is reflect on your answer. Um, you're going to state your answer to the question explicitly so you're going to clearly say this is the answer to the question that's been asked and then you're also going to judge yourself you're going to say was this efficient could I have done this another way um, obviously if you're running out of room you don't have a lot of space to do that um, and so you should do as much as you can but obviously it's the, the most important is to get the actual answer down and explain it clearly so let's take a look at how you would solve this problem, how you'd solve that problem using the four-step model. So I'll bring this up here. Okay, so um, zoom out a little bit. Okay, so after reading the question and making sure I understand the question, I can state that the question is asking me to figure out which fractions are equal to one another. Okay, I know that because right here the question is that. Okay, which fractions represent equal values? I'm going to highlight this part in blue because that is me showing my understanding of what the question is asking. Okay, and now we're going to take a look at my plan. So that was step one, not too bad. Uh, step two, I'm going to outline in, in orange. So my plan is, 
Um, so I plan to convert these fractions into equivalent fractions, okay? Because the question is asking me which fractions equal represent equal values. I need to find a way of comparing them, finding out which ones are equivalent. Okay, so I plan to convert these fractions into equivalent fractions. And to do this, I will find a common, de common denominator for all the fractions. I know that 4, 25, 20, and 100 will all divide evenly into 100. So I will use that as my denominator. Okay, so that's my plan. Okay, um, so these numbers, 4, 25, 20, and 100, they will all divide evenly into 100. Um, and so I'm going to highlight that part in orange. Hopefully it doesn't make the red too hard to see. Okay. Next, I'm going to carry out my plan because that's step three. So step three is show your calculations, show how you got the answer. Um, and so what I did here is I took three fourths. I made it equivalent to something over 100. If you zoom in a little bit here, you can see exactly what I multiplied each numerator and denominator by to get the equivalent fraction. Okay, and I notice that uh, 3 quarters equals 75 over 100, 15 twentieths equals 75 over 100, and of course 75 over 100 already equals 75 over 100. The only one that's not equivalent, therefore, is 18 25ths, which is 72 over 100. Okay, so step three I'm going to outline in green, or highlight in green, I should say. So this is my step three. This is me showing my work, showing how I got the answer using the plan that I described. And last but not least, I'm, I am going to explain my answer. Note that I set it off a little bit by uh, creating a little um, division line there, just dividing the top part from the bottom part. Um, and so here's how I explain my answer. 3 quarters, 15 twentieths, and 75 one hundredths are all equivalent. By changing them into denominators of 100, I could tell which were the same values. I could have also compared the fractions by decimal values. And as you can see, I ran out of space there. Um, in an ideal world, I probably would have explained how I would have gotten those decimals, but I did run out of space there. Um, so I will outline this in yellow, step four. Okay, And part of step four is making sure you answered the question that was asked. So when you're checking it over, you should always say, OK, did that answer the question I was asked. So the question said, which fractions represent equal values? And then my answer stated, um, certain fractions are equivalent. So yes, I did answer the question that was asked. Okay, Be careful. Sometimes you will get multiple questions in one. So you, you have to make sure that you've answered all parts of the question. Um, using space effectively is really critical. As you can see, I have a big chunk of space here that I didn't use that I probably could have used. Um, but you do need to uh, state state what you're doing really effectively and really clearly so that um, anyone looking at your answer can follow it. I hope this has been helpful. I really strongly stress that you follow this pattern when you're solving a problem. It really helps you to understand the problem yourself and it helps other people understand what you're doing. I find that when students use this method on a test or a quiz, they almost always do better uh, than students who do not. Um, because if I can see your thinking, even if you get the wrong answer, I will still give you um, partial value because you've explained your thinking really well. Hope this is helpful. Um, please review it and maybe even try doing a little bit of practice. Um, keep in mind that these boxes, like I say, on EQAO, um, you can't go outside of them. Um, or rather, if you do anything in, outside of the box, isn't going to be marked. So you have to practice being efficient with what you're writing and efficient with your space. Thanks very much. Have a great day. And this is Mr. A signing off.